yeah, 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 look, I, I, I know, Ridley, I know, but I really am busy that day. Okay. Oh, hello. Don't go. This isn't another iPhone 11 review. There's plenty of those on YouTube already. But this is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Pro. Really? Is this something professionals like us should be using? When Apple launched this phone, it was all about the amazing cameras. They even showed us some very cinematic footage, and it looked great. This is clearly meant to imply that we could actually shoot a movie with this. Really? Can I use this phone as a pro camera for work? Let's see. Okay, let's get the obvious test out of the way first. The picture you're looking at now is on my Sony F5, which has a super 35 size sensor, a PL mount, and proper cinema lens. But usually, I just use the Panasonic GH5. It's smaller and much easier to use when you're on your own. And there's something about that 6K sensor for 4K pictures that just looks lovely. So I'm spoiled for choice. I could use either of these cameras. But I could just use an iPhone 11 Pro with its 52mm equivalent lens. And it looks okay. Surprisingly close. You can definitely compare them. So that's it then. I'll just use a phone from now on. Um, if only it was that simple. You see, I had to work really hard at trying to make the big cameras match the look of this phone. And the sensors in this phone are tiny. We're talking an effective width of something like five and a half millimeters. The other problem is each one of the three cameras on this phone has a different sensor and they are all slightly different with different crop factors. So the 52 millimeter lens, effective focal length, has a crop factor of something like eight and a half. Now we all know you have to apply the crop factor to the aperture as well as the focal length. So this 52 millimeter lens has an effective aperture of more like f22 rather than the f2 that the specs would have you believe. But depth of field isn't everything. And a lot of pro cameras have small sensors that get a lot of professional use. My old DigiBeater of years gone by had sensors which were eight millimeters wide, and that was the industry standard for years. The standard iPhone app doesn't give you much control over the camera. In fact, it won't even do 25p. So I was using Filmic Pro, which I quite like. You can even shoot a log profile with it, but to be honest, the data rates aren't really high enough to make good use of that. So let's go outside and take some real shots. And the first thing you notice is the picture quality looks really good. It's super sharp, which you probably would expect with such a small sensor. But the colors look really good. They're vibrant, but natural looking. And there's loads of details in the shadows. Once again, I went to my favorite spot for doing a test shot, which really demonstrates highlights and shadows and the amount of detail you can capture. And I know I'm going at different times of the year and different times of the day, but I'm getting quite a collection of the same shot from lots of different cameras. The Mavo LF, the Panasonic S1H, the GH5, and now the iPhone. When you first look at the picture quality from the iPhone, it looks really impressive and super sharp. In fact, it's almost too sharp. It's more than you'd get from just having a small sensor. If you look closely, there's like the hint of a black line around all of the detail. It's like there's too much edge correction put in. It feels like an electronic sharpness rather than the optical sharpness you get from a good quality cinema camera and nice lenses. It's like when you first look at the picture quality from the iPhone Pro, 
It's really impressive. It has impact. But the more you look at it, the closer you look, the worse it gets. It's not all bad news. Because the sensor size on the iPhone is so small, rolling shutter is not the problem it would be with a larger sensor. The image stabilization is great. That works really well. And there's some useful slow-mo speeds as well. If we go back to comparing my F5, the GH5, and the phone with a couple of test shots, and not trying to match the pictures, but just get the most out of each lens, then the differences really become apparent. And I suppose the point I'm trying to make here is you can't match the phone to a cinema camera. You can match a cinema camera to the phone. I don't know if you noticed as well, if you have pictures with any highlights, like that test shot, when you burn out the picture, if you overexpose on a highlight, that detail's gone. It's gone forever, and it doesn't handle the highlights in a very pleasing way. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I like using the pier at night to test for noise levels in the shadows. And what you'd expect with a camera with a tiny sensor and a tiny lens is really poor low light performance. But actually, the iPhone 11 Pro surprises me. Well, obviously, if you push it up to the maximum ISO, then the noise in the mid-levels gets unusable. It falls apart. But up to about 2000 ISO, it's really surprising how well it copes. And I sort of suspect that there's some clever processing going on because there's no noise in the blacks at all. All the noise is in the mid-tones. So going off and shooting some normal pictures with plenty of highlights as well as shadows. And these iPhone cameras look so much better than they should. There's less noise than you'd think, and a lot of detail even in the shadows. In theory, a sensor this size should be rubbish. It sort of goes against what I'd expect, but I actually prefer the look of the iPhone pictures in low light. I think there's a very good reason Apple's launch video is mainly shot in the dark. Could it simply be the superb way the Apple iPhone 11 Pro handles the blacks? Besides, what they're really showing us here is what you can achieve with unlimited time, budget, lights and talent. And if you've got all those, why would you use a phone? The lack of noise on these sensors and the amount of detail you can resolve in the shadows is really impressive. And what's weird is, when there's plenty of light, when you've almost got too much light, it looks artificial. There's like too much edge correction. It's too sharp. But don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the iPhone 11 Pro is a bad camera. It's not. It's really good. And it's quite remarkable that you can get this sort of picture quality from a phone. But is it a Pro camera? Well, maybe. If you're shooting some epic B-roll, the best camera in the world is the one you've got with you, or you want to shoot something for YouTube or some quick cutaways in another shoot, then yes, you could call it a pro camera. But is it a cinema camera? No, not a chance.